This video was made possible by CuriosityStream. Watch thousands of high-quality documentaries and get access to my streaming service Nebula by using the link in the description. This is the largest American helicopter. But back in 1971, this is what the Soviet Union brought to the Paris Air Show. A helicopter so large it baffled observers because it could carry nearly 200 passengers and set world records for lifting power that still stand to this day. But after returning to the Soviet Union, the world's largest helicopter seemingly disappeared. In the Soviet Union, the helicopter emerged as an indispensable tool, a machine that could go where no other machine could, lifting people and supplies into remote regions that were once virtually inaccessible. And in a country as vast as the Soviet Union, the helicopter would help build a nation. By 1960, the Soviets were building some of the largest and most technically advanced helicopters in the world. But at the height of the Cold War, the need to build a truly enormous helicopter would become a matter of national security. By 1960, American spy planes were beginning to uncover the location of Soviet intercontinental ballistic missiles. For years, the Soviets had been hiding their nuclear missiles by building launch sites deep into the remote wilderness. But the only way to move heavy first-generation nuclear missiles was by train, and it meant building a rail line out to each launch site. And the Americans soon learned that to find the missile sites, they simply needed to follow the rail lines. Keeping nuclear missiles hidden was a matter of national security. So the Soviets devised the bold plan. Instead of using trains or roads, they'd airlift their missiles to remote locations. If helicopters could deploy missiles deep into the remote wilderness, it would be virtually impossible for American spy planes to spot them. But in 1960, even the largest helicopter in the world was nowhere near powerful enough to lift a 25-ton ballistic missile. The Soviets would need to design a new helicopter with at least twice the lifting power of anything before it. One option was to take what was already the largest helicopter in the world and scale it up, enlarging the MI6's fuselage so that it could safely carry a nuclear missile. But a larger helicopter would also require developing a new, more powerful engine and a larger rotor. To save development time, another option was to reuse the engine's rotor and gearbox from the MI6, but to use two sets of them. It was a configuration that had already been popularized by the Americans. But the approach wouldn't work for Soviet designers. In a tandem configuration, exhaust from the forward set of engines would interfere with airflow to the aft engines. The solution would be to arrange the rotors transversely, mounting the assemblies on a set of wings. This would allow engineers to reuse the MI6's rotors, engines, and gearbox entirely to build a truly enormous helicopter. They would designate the prototype as the V-12. The enormous machine would end up looking like a half-helicopter, half-airplane, with inversely tapered wings supporting the two rotors. To keep the helicopter stable, the rotor blades would spin in opposite directions, cancelling out reaction torque. During hover, directional control was achieved by variably tilting each rotor. And at higher speeds, the V-12's large tailplane further enhanced maneuverability. Operating the giant machine required a crew of six, with a pilot, co-pilot, and flight engineer seated in a lower-level cockpit, and a navigator, radio operator, and electrical engineer on a second level. The V-12's enormous cargo hold could carry combat material and machinery, or could be converted into a civilian transport, with seating for up to 196 passengers. But the V-12's primary role would be to deploy intercontinental ballistic missiles. And the first step would be to load the ICBMs onto cargo planes, 
that would then fly thousands of kilometers to remote landing strips. From there, the missiles would be transferred onto waiting V-12s and airlifted with support crew and equipment to locations hundreds of kilometers into the remote wilderness. With more than 12 million square kilometers of forest across the Soviet Union, American spy planes would be searching for a needle in a haystack. When the V-12 appeared at the 1971 Paris Air Show, it had already broken world records, including lifting an incredible 44 tons of payload up to over 6,000 feet in 1969, the equivalent weight of 25 mid-sized cars. Western observers could only speculate as to the V-12's true purpose, but many were expecting hundreds to be pressed into service. In reality, by 1971, impressing the West was about the only use the Soviets had left for the giant machine. Developing the V-12 had taken the better part of a decade, with design studies beginning in 1959 and the official go-ahead given in 1962. The construction of the first prototype didn't start until 1965, with the first successful test flight occurring three years later. A machine this large comes with compromises, and engineers had to work through numerous challenges around control and stability. But the biggest problem was that by 1971, the V-12 no longer had a purpose. The Americans launched the first spy satellite into orbit in 1959, and in a single day it could photograph more Soviet territory than all earlier spy plane missions combined making it far more difficult for the Soviets to hide their ICBMs. And by the 1970s, the Soviets were developing a new generation of ICBMs small enough to fit on trucks, which could evade reconnaissance by simply moving around. The V-12 was just too large and cumbersome to be useful beyond its original mission. There were just too few scenarios that called for lifting 44 tons of cargo or 200 passengers in a single helicopter. In 1974, development of the V-12 was ended, after only two prototypes had been built. With many technical problems still unresolved, the program was cancelled in favor of developing a new heavy-lift helicopter with a more conventional single-rotor design. Soviet engineers weren't afraid to think outside the box. And while the V-12 was still under development, engineers over at the MiG Design Bureau had another crazy idea, to turn a MiG-25 into the world's fastest VIP transport, swapping out the MiG's radar and missiles for a passenger cabin. You can learn more about this crazy Soviet proposal in my latest video available right now on Nebula. Nebula is a streaming platform I helped create along with some of YouTube's top educational creators. And it's where I'm experimenting with new kinds of content, without having to worry about pleasing YouTube's algorithms. Nebula is also where you can watch mustard videos before they're released on YouTube, without advertisements or sponsor messages. It's also home to a growing number of original shows, and a personal favorite of mine is The Logistics of D-Day, an ongoing series produced by Brian from Real Engineering. With high production values and in-depth research, each episode explores a fascinating aspect to one of the most ambitious military operations in history.